Well, 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 welcome to the Architects of Fate streaming extravaganza. That's right, you've found the self-proclaimed original Twitch TTRPG stream that lets you shake up our world. Now pay attention because this is how it works. If you'd like to add some loops to this roller coaster ride of the show, you're gonna need fake chips. Now these magical loyalty points can be earned just by watching, following, hosting, subscribing, or just engaging with us in the chat. It's like free money, Pete. With your fate chips, you can use your powers as an architect to heal your favorite players, summon items that will make their adventure a lot easier, or a lot harder. You can even make players say or sing outrageously silly things. Think of those possibilities. But, but wait, wait, wait. There is more. You can also toss our unsuspecting heroes into random encounters that will leave them sweating, strategizing, and questioning their life choices. All it takes is a quick redeem command in the chat. You choose the item or action and the player you want to mess with, and we'll take it from there. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourselves for a mind-blowing spectacle of storytelling and mayhem. We've got adventure. We've got drama and more surprises than a clown car at a kid's birthday party. So let's go! Oh, hi! When did you get here? Hi, everybody! Welcome back to the Architects of Fate. We're back with the next episode of Call of the Nether Deep with episode 26, the Rumble at the Dome. <laughs> Uh, last we left the banditos off, uh, <clears throat> beg pardon, uh, they had finally returned, uh, the, uh, the super innocuous, uh, the elephant statue, uh, back to the allegiance of all sight, at which point Prolex invited them back to his, uh, personal, uh, digs for a big old feast where, uh, the banditos had their fill. Uh, tried to steal his his bed, uh, but much to the chagrin of Artemis, dragged uh, the two bigger banditos out by the short lapel of their collar coats and tossed them both, uh, all, well, all three of them, uh, into a corner stable where they all got themselves good and comfy, found themselves a nice long night's rest. Uh, and it is within the stable and that... that, that you know, just slightly sulfury smell uh, awakening uh, most of the banditos. Uh, but before we get too, too far, guys, um, speaking of the banditos himself, let's introduce them. Uh, first up, we have uh, Chance playing the part of Aldane. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good to have you here again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, next up, we have Nathaniel playing the part of Carmina, Artemis, Ivy. I did it. Hello, everyone. Next four up. Day, four days sober. Four days sober. LCBO, we need you. <laughs> Next up, we got Pound uh, Doggies uh, playing the part of Boltar, the All Seeing. My review of Prolex's bread and breakfast. Good food, even if it was half eaten, but terrible, terrible, terrible room service. I mean, they just kick you right out of bed. Mm. We can all be winners. Uh, and uh, normally he rolls last in the initiative, uh, but this week uh, our, our good friend Mr. Goliath Man rolled a natural one on his constitution check and got himself a little ill. Uh, so he is sleeping that off, and we hope to have him back next time. So, Banditos, as the... Uh, the warm air of uh, the early morning begins to surround you, uh, and that you know, uh, and the heat begins to heat up the the hay pail uh, of that you are currently sleeping on, and uh, reigniting uh, the scent of various types of feces begin to fill your nose. Oh. You come back to consciousness. Oh. Oh. Um, hey. What? Hey buddy, what are you what are you doing back there? Huh? You don't have to grip so tight. Oh my bad. <clears throat> that was cozy. Yeah. It's, yeah. You're warm. 
Yeah, let's not let's not talk about it. Let's just okay. Uh, uh I guess uh we, we got we got stuff to do, huh? Yes, we have a mission to get a mission. We have a mission. We have a missions. We have a mission. I think. Yeah, I need some coffee. Uh, where's yeah, and where, some more of those candied blueberries? Yeah, where's 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 Goliath and 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 Artemis? We need to. Uh, Goliath is uh, stirring up next to the both of you. Oh, oh, uh, I, I guess uh, Prolex is off for wasn't uh, for for the whole night. I guess. Uh, how did we get here again? Dude, you were amazingly hilarious. Like you were tripping out of trees. Uh, I saw you dance with the Baroness at one point in time. It was crazy. Oh well, that's uh, that's just politicking, you know. Gotta gotta make Draconia great again and all. <sighs> Yep, yep, that was, you were great at it. I'm just standing off on, the, I'm just leaning on the side of the wall, sipping a bit of co coffee, just watching. Oh. I just wake up. <clears throat> Good morning. Hi. Hello. How'd you guys sleep? Wonderful. I haven't had a bed that comfortable in, well, since, like, I was in the tree, which I guess was last night. Well, night before night, that now. Yeah, it was great. Yes. Well, gentlemen, if you are severely hungover, which looks like you guys are, uh, there's food inside. Uh, once you've had your breakfast, uh, we can discuss whether we go to the Life Dome or where we, where, what we do next. Yeah, I'm yeah. good to go. I'm gonna go. Um, uh, I already went inside and grabbed something to eat. Uh, I, I have like like a piece of bread, and I'm chewing eggs. Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to go whenever. Oh, and uh, at, at which point Goliath will pike up. Uh, like, where did you get the? Where do you even get the food, man? Did some of the illegals give that to you? Well, no. Hey, what do I? What did I? What? What did? What did we say, Clyde? They're 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 migrants. Uh, uh to, tomato, tomato. <laughs> all, all, Keep using all, this all. word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> I'm sure some of them are good people. Oh. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna um uh just chomp down on a piece of bread. Um, so, um, is that, um, life, uh, life dome? Yeah, we gotta go into the dome and find a secret entrance to a underground labyrinthine maze full of treasure. And uh, then not go in. So wait, we're not getting the treasure? No, we're gonna tell them where the entrance is so they can be our backup when we go into getting the treasure for reals. Ah. Oh, oh. Gotta have somebody to secure the door, you know. Maybe we find maybe we find out where the entrance is and we 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 don't we don't tell them. Or or we tell them somewhere else. No no no. I want them to secure the door so that when we go deeper we know the door's going to stay open. How do we know they don't just cut us out completely once we give them the information? Eh, they it? don't seem that kind of folk. Hmm. Plus, if they did, then I would just destroy the entrance and they would lose it anyways. I hope I hope I don't have to see that, but I also kind of want to. <laughs> Wonderful. So while you three gentlemen have a bath, you guys desperately need it. I have a bit of shopping to do. I'll meet I'll you go back with here you. in an hour. No, no, no. You need a bath. You need a bath. And What's that? Is I follow. Don't make me use the jewel. I wild shape into a raven. 
You won't find me. Hey, you know what? You know what? Bath's not a bad idea. And I'll just trot inside and look for some hot water. Uh, it doesn't take long for you to find a, uh, a you know, it is n not but a, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a little, you know, little shack uh, with, it is just four walls of uh, thin wood uh, and has a, uh, a bucket that you pull the chain on and it costs you uh, two silver to go use. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Silver for hot water, <laughs> uh, and, and and sure enough, as you pull on it, uh, uh, apparently the heat of Ankarel has not found its way uh, to this uh, this water source just yet, and it is icy cold as it uh, as it pours on you. That's cool. I'll um I'll cast um a firebolt uh somewhere on a pipe to heat it up. <sighs> Roll an attack just for funsies. Sure. That's a nat 20. 27. All right, so you managed to actually uh, kind of just uh, have your flame wrap around this pipe, and suddenly the, the water heats up, and it heats up, and it continues to heat up. That's fine. To the point where it's almost slightly uncomfortable. Boltar, Boltar likes a scalding hot shower. If it's not, if it's not burning away at least one layer of skin, it's not getting clean. And he just scrubbity scrub scrubs. And uh, you hear a a, scrub, a, scrub. a a knock from outside the outside the shower. Hey man, are you about done? The I smell like shit out here. Hey, yo, no, that's fine. Listen, the water's freezing cold anyway. You're not gonna be happy. Just chill out. Did the illegals take all the hot water? Scrub, scrub. Like, have you been talking to Goliak? It is Goliak that's talking to you. God damn it, Goliak! <laughs> we just we just talked about this. Look, the longer the longer I talk about this, the longer it's taking me to clean my nethers. Uh. So, uh, oh God, no! Nope, Look, nope, just not. because just because you don't like south of the border doesn't mean that I have to ignore it. Okay. Sorry, that, sorry. I, my thing cut out. You, you're nether deep, or I I, I bit my nether shallow. Not saying oh, that, that would have been good. You should you should you should jumped right in with that. That would be great. <clears throat> Missed opportunity. Uh, no, I, I I chose not to take the opportunity. <laughs> Well, uh, after showers are complete, uh, uh, Boltar, what are you and Goliath going to do? Because uh, uh, both Artemis and Aldane have run off. I'm not entirely sure they shared where they were going. I'm going to, um, they, they just said they were going to do some, some, some shopping. I'm going to look at um, Goliath and go, hey, you want to get some, um, you want to get some seed money for your wall? Uh, yes, yes, uh, we must build the wall, although I won't need money for it uh, because uh, uh, the elves are going to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 we've heard that before. Uh, it's and cool. those uh, filthy little kobolds. We'll get them to pay for it, too. I go, cool, follow me. And then we're going to go to, there's got to be, there's got to be a place to, to, to gamble here. Now, 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 oh, now. Is there... Ever. Boltar Boltar has used gambling as an excuse, but he has not actually gambled here yet. So <laughs> he is gonna go pop in for a little gambling and then meet everybody uh, at. Um, uh, Absolutely. Um, so if you at the uh, dome. So af after you know uh, gallivanting a bit with Goliath, you eventually find your way back to the Suncut Bazaar because you weren't that far to begin with cool. uh, and find yourself at the Golden Chip. Nice. I'm going to look at Goliath and go, now you stick with me here. Okay, now listen. Okay, I've got a system. All right, and we are going to come out ahead. I'm going to walk in like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> 
and I'm going to uh, uh, see. Did the do do they have like specific uh, games of chance in there that I can play? That that they do. That they do. Uh, Me out they, of this. They have uh, they have uh, Avandra's favor. Uh, they have Gambit of Ord, uh, and they have Quan Adrenzel. I hope I said that right. You know, as, as as a uh, as an X Men fan, I'll I'll go with the Gambit. Uh, all right. So, um, how liquid are you? How liquid? Altar? How liquid? Yeah. Uh. W- uh. Because this. Uh, so this particular card game uh, requires a fifty gold initial bet. Oh, 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 that kind of liquid. Okay, what are the, what are what are, what are the uh the um the the bets on the other two games? Uh 25 and 10. I'll I'll start About, we'll start with the 10. We'll start with the 10. All right, so Quan uh, 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 Drensal, uh also known as the run uh run of luck. Uh this is a game uh this is uh, this game is a contest of lizard racing. Each player can uh, bet 10 gold or more on the single racer in a field of three. Anyone who backs uh, the winner gets back the double the amount wagered. Seems pretty simple. All right, who's who's who 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 am I who am I betting on? Who who are my three options? Uh, let's see. Uh, I need lizard names. Um, oh goodness. Uh, so you step up and uh, uh, come on, come, come, please p- place your bets. Place your bets. Uh, the uh, we have uh, three of our finest beasts uh, set and ready to for the next race. First, we have Ilika. In the second, uh, in the second slot, we have Loose Scales. And in the third uh, slot. We have Sal E. Manda. So amongst the three, which would you like to bet on? Uh, knowing nothing of how this is going, how, how this is going to get chosen. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to look at Goliak and we're like, what are you, what are you, 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 you getting a good, you getting a good feeling? I like, I, I, I mean, man, I, you know me, I think, uh, you know, I like I'm good and loose. Uh, so... I'm, I I would have to pick for, uh, the the loose scales. Then. I'm gonna I'm uh, you know what you know what this is the first time that you're gambling with me. You're my good luck charm, and I'm gonna kind of like rub the top of his head, and uh, uh, we're gonna put ten gold on loose scales here, loose scales. All right, and with that, the uh, the bets are closed. All right, raising the gates in three, two, one, and he pu- uh, pulls in the, the gates lift and. The three lizards go flying out the front gate uh, with the first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with Eye Licker uh, making his way out and uh, kind of getting uh, you know, halfway towards uh, the finish. Uh, then your uh, particular beast, uh, Lou Scales, uh, you know, d- uh, makes it just a little bit further past them with Sal Emander. Making it how far? How far? Uh, he's a, a, apparently had a, a, a bit of a, a big meal before this race <clears throat> and is looking sluggish out the gate. Uh, the next leg, let's see, Eye Licker uh, begins to progress. Uh, he's about three quarters of the way uh, to the finish line. Uh, but Lou Scales, hot on his tail. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. Gets, uh, you know, catches up in his uh, right, right uh, nose to nose with uh, with Eye Licker and Sally Mander still kind of, uh, you know, just just dragging tail behind him. And with the final leg, uh, let's see, and Sally, or sorry, and with that um, with that last bend. Uh, Eye Licker and Loose Scales are, are are neck and neck with each other, but eventually Loose Scales just kind of pulls just by a nose and crosses the finish line. Yeah! I'm going to look at uh, Goliak and go, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, man, that's, a, that's the first brick in the wall. We're going to make Draconia great again. Yeah.
Um, and, um, yeah, I guess we'll, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to monopolize the, 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 the time, but, but Boltar, I don't, and I don't know how you want to handle this, but Boltar is probably going to drag his good luck charm around to the other, uh, things and try to win as much money as he can. Uh, currently 95 gold. Like I said, I don't know how you want to handle this, but like, I, like I said, I don't want to sit here and monopolize all the time either. It's okay. I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll leave this scene with you and Goliath, uh, going around to see what tables are open, uh, while we go back, uh, to the slightly, uh, or beginning to rebuild, uh, uh, shops at the Suncut Bazaar, where we rejoin Artemis and Aldane. Nevermore. Weirdest thing to the start of the day, but anyways, I just start looking at some of the stands. I look some, at some of the shops. I'm looking for a place for like potions and magical items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So very easy to find. Uh, you find a general goods uh, shop that ha would have a. Uh, what you're lo looking for, mm, excuse me, should have tried to bite on that big of a piece of ice. Um, you find a general shop that would be good for, you know, your generalized potions and things of the sort. I would go in to the usual, you know how it is, browsing, looking around, looking at stuff. Uh, good day, madam. Uh, can, can I help you find anything? Yes, I'm in the market for potions. I'm yeah. part of it. You know how it is, traveling band of adventurers. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all before. Uh, and he reaches under the counter and sets two big boxes of uh, potions in front of you. Like, all right, this one, these are all my healing potions is what I have available. Uh, these ones came in unmarked. Um bit of a potluck there. Hmm. Okay, so what about this box? I point to the other one. Uh, which one? You said you pointed to the first one here. You said, and then you said, uh, you said you put up two boxes. Of... The, the first one is uh, full of uh, various levels of healing potions. Uh, the other one is a bit of a potluck of this set. Uh, it, uh, it looks like an absolute uh, poorly put together mishmash of different colored liquids. I'm going to perch on that box. Ugh, oh, that's uh, right. You're a raven. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to get your bird uh, off the merchandise. My bird? That is your bird. You came in with it, no? Uh, I wasn't on his shoulder. I was flying around above. I did fly in a bit. I I was staying behind him, but I wasn't like right on him. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Do I look like uh, one of the, these nature type people? Well, you're dressed all in black. That's a raven. It kind of fits your motif. So whatever. You shoot, shoot. And he goes I to shoo, shoo, shoo off, off and land on the top of a cabinet. Uh, Preferably a cabinet that has some sort of knick-knack or kitschy or statue-y thing on top of it. Um, out of character, if you want to start breaking stuff, go for it. I don't pay for it. I'm not paying for this crap. And Hi, it serves as a body rights. How's your lives, Aldi? High. Always high. Um, uh, there's, uh, there is some decorative uh, glass things atop of his cabinets. Peck at it. Not hard enough to break it or knock it off, but I peck at it a little. Hey, no, no, you. Go, uh, ah. And he goes and rushes and grabs a broom and uh, tries to swat you off the top of the cabinets. You, down, 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 get out of here. I fly to a rafter in the corner. Blasted birds. Uh, uh, sorry about that, ma'am. Uh, now we get. What were you? Uh, what would you like to purchase? Um, so, okay, so first boxes of, uh, regular. So, 
after salting me, uh, you want to start, you know, uh, how much are these potions, this first box of potions here? Uh, well, how, many, see. how many in the first box? Yeah, you have uh, the standard potions of healing. Those are uh, are 50 gold pieces each. You have the the next level up. Uh, don't quote me on which one's which. Those are 300 apiece. And then you have the superior potions for 500 apiece. So I'm going to fly behind him. I'm perched on something but some table or shelf. Ah! Uh, and he swats at you again uh, with uh, with the broom. I want to I want to try sleight of hand. Uh, all right, uh, go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check. He's going to get I'm distracted. Do I get no, no, he gets a disadvantage on his perception. Is how I'm handling that. I was asking. I was asking me. Uh, do I get advantage on my sleight of hand since? Uh... No, I gave him disadvantage uh, on his perception. Okay. Um... Which you know, roll higher than the five. You'll be okay. All right, um, uh, you are able to abscond with one potion of your choosing. I'll take uh, one superior. All right, and think it's in your bag. Go ahead and add it to your inventory. Okay, um, let me just look at my gold, my inventory. Yeah, I can do that. Um, how many of the regular uh, f first level? Uh, potions he's, are there. The 50 he's got five of those in there, and he's got uh, two and two. Well, he had two and two. Now he's got two and one. I wonder where that went. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, I I look to the gentleman. I'll say, I'll take five basic and one of your uh, greater, please. I fly right. out of the building. Ah, blasted bird. All right. Um, all right, so five, uh, that'll be uh, 250, uh, and then another three, uh, uh, that'll be 550 gold pieces, please. I, ha I hand him, I uh, hand him the money. And he's like, all right, and, uh, you know, piles them up and, uh, and uh, separates what's left. Uh, huh, I could have swore I had one more of those in here. I must Never have more. I must have misplaced it. Uh, anyway. Um, well, I mean, you are a business, so you have and, and some stock. I start iron. pecking on a window from the outside. Oh, blasted bird! And uh, he will actually reach into the box of assorted potions, uh, all of which are not labeled. I don't know what this does, but we'll certainly find out! And he's going to wing it at the window uh, that you're pecking at. Uh, he's gonna oh, shattering a potion uh, on his own window. Okay. And with a three, uh, it doesn't even <laughs> hit uh, the window. It hits uh, the seal around it, and uh, as soon as uh, the glass breaks, a big burst of ice uh, just uh, completely freezes that uh, the window sill over. Like, oh, I guess that's what that one did. I'll oh, flap wow. away in a cloud of feathers and frost. Now, maybe you can be of a little help to me one more time. I'm looking for a magic user who enchants items or who has enchanted items. Oh. <coughs> uh, if, if that's the case, uh, I recommend you check around the corner with uh, old Wizzy McFinkelbottom. Thank you for your time. I walk out without even looking at you. All right. Uh, and with that, we go back uh, to the casino uh, where uh, Goliath and Boltar have found their way uh, into a game of, of well, let's uh, they have found themselves to a table uh, playing Avondra's Favor. Hey man, this uh, the, and uh, Gal Galiac will pipe up to 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 
uh, Baltar, Lahimi, and uh, this one looks pretty fun. And you see a table where uh, it, it's very similar to uh, craps by the looks of it, uh, where one player is uh, throwing a pair of die, uh, and uh, people are surrounding the rest of the table, placing their own individual bets. If I know anything about craps, I want to bet the Iron Cross. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Uh, uh. Oh God! I think I I think I read about how to play craps one time. Um, strip cat. No, 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 no. Baltar is keeping his clothes on. So the minimum bet at this table is twenty five gold. That's fine. We're gonna go ahead and place twenty five gold. Is it like a uh, who's who's doing what here? Uh, if you are, st- it, it, it is up to you. Um, if you would like to roll, you can roll. Uh, or you can bet on someone else rolling. I I want to roll, but I want Goliath to blow on it first. Uh, that's a little bit of a re- weird request, man. But uh, all no, right. trust me, it's uh, it's, it's it's good luck. Trust me, just give just 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 give the dice a little blow. Um, I, I, I'm not sure you're going to appreciate this. Uh, but he rears back and. And a little bit of lightning begins to emanate from, uh, from him breathing out. Ah, 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 like, oh. hey, uh, 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 just for flavor, roll me a dexterity save. Sure, I'm totally fine with that. That's gonna be a twelve. Uh, that will not save you. Take uh, five points of lightning damage. That's fine. <laughs> From Goliath blowing on your dice. Ah, oh, oh no! All that's right, I'm so, gonna be like that's gonna be good. That's gonna give it a little extra spice. All right. So just so you know, you uh, are hoping for a seven or a twelve. Okay. Okay. Eleven. See eleven. So a and and this is similar to craps. Okay, so it is up to you. Uh, you can roll another d six to try and get to seven or twelve, but it does require another bet of twenty five gold. Another just one die, or I, I get to roll two again. Just one. Just one. You get to pick one and re-roll it. Ah, uh, got it. Or you can lick your wounds and move on. <laughs> sounds like, though, if I get a different number, sounds like other things happen. Like... Uh, uh, would I would I be accurate in that? If 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 I, if I change one of the rolls and it changes to something else, it literally has to be a seven or uh, a twelve. Uh, we'll look at Goliath and go. I don't know, man. I don't know if this well, is our game. There's this one over here, and he points to to one of the other tables that's playing the gambit of Ord. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at him and be like, okay, but we go over there, and it's gonna be one bet, and that's it. Yeah, man, you got this. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's say you you can take your dice and you can shove them. Uh, and the table's laughing you off as you walk away. Uh, but you make your way over to the gambit of ore table, which this one requires a uh, a minimum bet of uh, or an initial bet. Excuse me. There's difference in wording there. An initial bet of. 50 gold. Yep. That's going to take me all the way down. All right. So you sit down at the table and there's two other players there with you. Um, The dealer deals uh, the first round of cards out. Uh, For this, uh, uh, Boltar, I need you to roll a D8. Three. Player one, player two. Okay. 
So keep keep uh, well uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm gonna have you re-roll that uh, and re-roll it in secret from what I can see. So if uh, you got dice next to you, do that. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I do have a D8. Yeah. And for this, you're also going to, uh, in a little bit, you're also going to need a D6 and a D4. Got it. Okay. D8 has been rolled. All right. The, uh, the first player kind of, uh, you know, taps the table indicating a check. The second player, uh, you know, pushes in another 10 gold. Uh, it, it comes around to your turn. I'm going to look, uh, look, look around and, and go, I don't, I'm going to look at the dealer. What do I, what do I do? Well, you either see his bet or you walk away. Oh, so if I don't have 10 gold, then I just lost 50 gold is what you're telling me. Not necessarily. If, uh, if that's all the gold you can bet, you can just not bet further. Oh, well then I choose not to bet. So, uh, uh, you're, if you're already effectively all in, you can't bet further. Um, I, I, I'm all in. Oh, oh, betting the mortgage. I see. <laughs> all right. Uh, and he'll uh, he'll go around to the other player, and he looks at his card, and he just chucks it into the middle, like ah, rotten, stinking luck. All right. So with that, it is down just to the two of you, and uh, the opposing player will look up to you. Well, uh, just you and me. Uh, I guess uh, I'll show you what I got. Nothing too, too big. And he uh, slaps the first card down face up on the table, and it is the highest value card possible. Wonderful. So... Uh, so now go ahead and roll me a d6. Okay. And now roll me a d4. Okie doke, that's... <laughs> okay. Interesting. <laughs> what is the total of those three? Uh, uh, 15. Um, so the dealer deals out to the both of you. He's like, come on, come on. Oh, God damn it! Uh, as the next two cards come out at uh, the lowest value in the, the uh, second to lowest value, uh, giving him a grand total of 12 to your 15, and the pot of 150 gold gets pushed your way. Oh, God, wow, that, that, was, uh, that was really easy. Oh, if it's so easy, then why don't you bet me again, you son of a bitch? Um, I'm gonna go, uh... You got some extra playing there, money there. Come on, give me a chance to win it back. Uh, sure. I mean, my rolls were okay before. Uh, why not again? I can get another 15. Mm -hmm. Hit, hit, so, hit, hit me again, dealer. 50 gold out my, so, uh, out, out, out as so, soon as, as soon as uh, I get it. So, so, uh, so uh, 50 go uh, gold from you, that other, and the other two players. Three cards dealt out once again. So the first one, go ahead and roll your D8. Oh. Uh, the first player who had folded out in uh, the first round uh, pushes in five gold. And it comes around to you. I'm going to, I'm going to look at, can I get a read on the, uh, the, 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 the chatty guy, the, the, that, the guy who's. He's the one that act after you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to kind of get a read on him. To... Uh, roll a perception. Eighteen. Um, he does not. He, he's got a kind of, you know, a little bit of a sneer, um, looking like he's not happy with the car, first card he was dealt. Got it. Got it. I, can I can I do a deception to kind of make it seem like I have a very weak hand? Uh, how do you do that? 
The answer is yes, but how do you do it? Um, I just kind of like look at the card and just kind of... And then look over at the, the, the guy who just put in the five and look over at my money and just kind of go... Okay, Hollywood. <laughs> but I want to. I, 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 I'm hoping for a good roll here, so he believes it. That's a nat twenty, twenty six total. Uh, and both of them seem to have this uh, air of confidence begin to fill them. I go ah uh, five, uh, five more is all. I guess sure. All right, and then the sec, uh, uh, the guy that was chatty before also pushes in uh, the additional five gold. Uh, so that's going to be a grand total of 165 in the pot currently. Um, next round is uh, the next card is uh, dealt out. Go ahead and roll a d6. D6. Oh, shit. That fell on the floor. Respect the cock. Ow. Okay. Uh, the first guy uh, feeling confident by uh, you know uh, you know your uh, from your deception previously goes <laughs> all right uh, um, all right and he pushes in an additional ten gold. It's to you. Um, I'll I'll do the I'll do the same. Look at the cards again and look around and I'll put in um. I'll I'll, I'll look at him and go. You know what? I put in 10 more, so I'll put in 20 total. Okay. Uh, it comes around to the Chinese guy's like, oh, that, this is God, bullshit, and slams his card into the muck. Uh, the uh, the other gentleman sits there, looks, uh, looks at his two cards again. You see him kind of look up into the sky like he's counting, uh, like uh, it's the beautiful mind, uh, uh, you know, animation around his head. Uh, before eventually a minute later he pushes in the additional 10 gold uh, bringing the total pot up to 205 finally roll me a d4 <laughs> um, okay he, he acts first right he acts first Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see if you can handle this. And he pushes in a bet of 25. Man, I guess you got me. I'll go over the top. I'll be like, I'm all in. I'll put 75 in. <sighs> and let's see how confident he's feeling. With a natural one, he, uh, the, 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 uh, the feeling of fear just, absolutely overtakes him like oh god oh you can have it and he flips over and slams his cards on on the table and you see he had a total of 15 oh hey that's exactly what i had oh son of a <laughs> and then uh, he uh he tries to flip the table but it's pretty held down to the floor pretty damn well uh he gets up and storms off he's like and the other guy that was chatty late, uh, earlier is like, uh, just can't win nothing off these goddamn amateurs. And he storms off as well. I'll look at Goliath and I'll be like, and that is how it is done. Um, what was the pot? Uh, for that one was 205. It was 205 and then he put 25 in. Oh, oh So that'd yes. be 230. So 230. And then and then I put seventy five in on top of that, so it's two thirty plus seventy five. Got it. Thank you. Well, well, did you already take the seventy five out of your inventory? I did, but I just okay. put it. I just put it back in, and now I'm just gonna put the two thirty in. There we go. Perfect. Uh, I'll take five gold out, and I'll tip the dealer. Oh well, thank you very much. I go. Ah, uh, you know, um, this is this was great. You are a very good luck. You you are very good luck. Um, I, uh, I I I know. It's like uh, almost like if you have someone to scare off all those goddamn illegals, uh, you, you win just a little bit more because they're not here to cheat and steal. I'm gonna just gonna go. <laughs> he's just he's he's just he's just kidding. I swear. Okay, let's go. We should probably get to the the the, 
dome thing anyway. Uh, they're probably going to be waiting for us. So let's let's uh, let, let, let's get out of here. And back to the Sun Cup Bazaar we go, where uh, uh, where uh, we find Artemis walking into the shop of Wizzy McFinkelbottom. Oh, oh hello. Oh, good day, Madam. Oh, can I help you? Yes, I'm in the market for a sort of particular item. I am uh, looking for... Market for an item? Oh, yes. Uh, many markets items. Uh, in the, uh, item markets! <laughs> uh, what can I get for you? Well, you came highly recommended by the one of the shopkeepers down there. Uh, so I am looking for a lantern that can, uh, when lit, can shine a bright light and... Like, uncover hidden messages, anything invisible, like messages, um, like anything that might be invisible, like magical. Oh, images. you're looking for a, a lantern that's almost a, like a, so. Is there a magical item that you can reference that I might be able to use? Yeah, I just didn't look it up. There is a magic lamp, uh, magical lantern that you could use. I think it's a lantern or a ruby queen or something like that. I'm not, not 100% sure. Probably should look uh, at this. And, uh, and eventually uh, uh, she'll come about like, oh, uh, you have this. It doesn't have, it have uh, the widest of ranges. Uh, but it, uh, as far as revealing something immediately close to you, you may find it helpful. Um, and she'll push over this. It looks like a standard oil lantern. Um, but as, as soon as she, uh, uh turns, uh, you know, uh, the wick, uh, it begins emanating a, just a, a rainbow of different color lights. Um, and she is handing you, uh, or, uh, they call this a, uh, a fairy lantern. <laughs> uh, it has a, uh, uh, invocation of, uh, a uh, fairy fire within it. Oh, that would be very handy for, uh, traveling. Um, well, all oh things being fair, just so, so everything is on the up and up. Uh, it, it can only see in a very small radius of ten feet around you. That's I think that definitely seems fair. How oh. much? Uh, well, for this particular piece, I'll be asking three hundred and fifty gold pieces. Think you can come down a little bit because you've been refer you were a referral. Oh, let's uh, highs or lows. Oh, low. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, you seem like a perfectly nice lady, but I do have a business to run, and I'm afraid I cannot offer any discounts. Kitty, I was going to tell so many people about how I got a good deal at your shop. That's Oh, I've, oh that's... I, I've been in business for long enough that I will survive with or without. I know, but I mean, you, you, when you got to compare it to Gilmore Glorious Goods, I mean... Mm. Well, if you're looking for Gilmore's, he's, uh, uh, his uh, franchise shop is but two blocks down. So why to go to someone as glamorous as him when I can go come to a man who's been in business for so long with top quality goods? Well, the decision is yours. The price is set, uh, so it's all up to you. If you want to go ask uh, that old Dredge Gilmore if he has uh, one of these for you, you're welcome to do so. Uh, but if you return later, the price will be 400 gold pieces. I'll, I'll just pay him the 350. Ah, uh, good choice. And uh, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, thank you for your patronage. <laughs> And you have a wonderful day. Oh, don't come back to Fizzy Bottoms where everything is extra fizzy. <laughs> I'm rigged, but uh, I don't say that out loud.
And eventually you find your uh, way out of uh, Fizzle Bottoms. And as you're walking out, uh, you uh, just for the sake of expediency, uh, you bump right into Boltar and Goliath. Oh. <clears throat> oh, wow. You guys wouldn't happen to have found any tickleable shopkeepers, have you? And Bolt, I, look, uh, I look at you and I'm like, never more. Goliath will walk into um, oh, uh, into Wizzy's and come out about five minutes later. He's um, hey, 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 guys. Um, I'm surprised you didn't ask about this. Uh, these are uh, like these seem pretty handy. And you see him putting uh, an earring on. He's like, they come in a pair. Uh, would either of you like the other one? Never more. Yeah, yeah we, I think we should give it to Aldane once we find him somewhere. I'll, I'll come and perch on top of Goliak's head. Oh, uh, I, 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 God damn it, man. Uh, uh, well... Here, you can hold this in your beak until you turn back into to, to Aldane form. Um, so that uh, that being said, Aldane, if you want to add an earring of sending to your inventory. Now, does that does that just let the two people with um uh that cast sending? So there's no like like you don't have to be within like. Uh, it's pretty much limitless. You all can talk to each other. You know, within reason, I believe it's like 500 feet. How much would another pair uh, cost us? Mm. Uh, let's see. And could we get them? Could we get them all synced up together? Absolutely, could. Because I mean, most of us have sending, but the, but this this makes it a little bit easier, I think. Say the spell slots, yeah. Um. And we will have to let uh, MGM know that he finally got it, because that is uh, my paying him back uh, for healing me in Drakenheim. Or I'm sorry, it's an earring of message is what it's actually called. So sorry. So uh, uh, so hopefully that's actually in the uh, the compendium. So. Um, but, uh, the earring has five charges while wearing it. Uh, you can expend one charge to cast the message spell. Uh, the earring regains one D four plus one, uh, expended charges daily at dawn. Um, and the second pair would cost, uh, 800. Oof. Where the hell did he get that kind of money? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna look at, um, I'm gonna look at them and go, uh, well, look, uh, we just went to the casino. We had a good day, but not that good. You're gonna have to give me like an actual full day in the casino if you want me to buy that kind of stuff. But hey, maybe we get some, we get some good treasures, right? We're getting treasures. Never know. I mean, I have Never a, more. I have, a, I have another side job that uh, needs doing, but I don't think it's gonna pay that much. Mm. All right. Well, it's, it's good that you guys, you, you, you two have that. So we should definitely, if we split the party, we need to split you two. Uh, well, uh, well um, maybe if you had uh, my kind of charisma, you could have got to them for free like I just did. But, you know. Uh, How does he always just so, fall his us, way into this? Some of us, some of us have the looks. Uh, we have uh, the charisma. I mean, hey, uh, wa watch this, watch this, check this out. I'm going to Never uh, more. He holds up a pack of flyers above his head. Join me Never in more. making Draconia great again. And within the next 10 seconds, uh, a crowd begins to surround him. As I'm still uh, writing uh, on uh, his head. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that uh, blasted, but uh, uh, sh sh let me make some money here. Never more. And eventually he walks off with an additional 10 gold from uh, from selling his uh, 
literature. Definitely not a manifesto. All I will right. Start circling in the air and so, slowly flying in circles towards the uh, life dome. Oh. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, if you guys are all done in the uh, sun cut bazaar, uh, with the uh, the the uh, day's winnings from gambling uh, uh, pocketed and the new gear acquired. Uh, the banditos move their way back towards the river district, uh, the home of the Life Dome. Um, when eventually, uh, when you guys do arrive and get there, um, you find that it's uh, literally as described. It, it's this glass structure uh, that it looks like just you know a story, story, stories tall. Uh, greenhouse uh, that it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb uh, but as you get closer you you start to uh, you know gain understanding why they call it the life dome very quickly uh, because while uh, the dome itself is uh, transparent as it's uh, you know all made of almost completely glass um, you're able to see within it and you see just an absolute luscious amount of life um, the, the, you'd be harder pressed to find a point of, uh, you know, sand or gray or, or, you know, it's all green and beautiful flowers of all different sorts of colors. Um, I'll fly around through there excitedly, dipping and diving and coming back to the party. And um, so, but so, uh, the, so you can fly around it and eventually uh, land back with the party. Uh, when they make their way to the uh, to the main entrance. So with that, eventually uh, you kind of stroll in and start to, uh, you know, kind of just take a peek around, and uh, you see the um, uh, it, you know bit of a, I know it's not the right word for it, uh, but I can't think of the 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 correct one. But you see a little bit of a lake. Uh, it's the oasis. Uh, that serves as the point of where Ankarel gets all of their fresh water. Uh, it is ultimately what feeds the river of the river district. Um, and eventually you are approached uh, by a... Um, I'm so sorry. Um, it ha yeah, you find a, 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 a small gnome. And he goes, oh, I Hello, hello, hello. I, I do so really get visitors. And he holds aloft a um, uh, you you, uh, you see this uh, little gnome, uh, and he looks like you know your prototypical garden gnome, uh, you know suspenders, green shirt, red pants, uh, and a uh, you know slightly crooked uh, you know dunce cap on top of his head with the polka dots. Uh, but he's also holding uh, a, a thin shard of iridescent glowing quartz uh, uh, that lets out a bit of a quiet home, a uh, quiet hum, excuse me. Um, and as uh, as you kind of stroll in, uh, he cut he taps uh, his uh, his quartz staff, and you see the panels of the dome. Uh, begin to emanate this blue and purple, uh, these blue and purple arcane runes, uh, which uh, flicker and fade, leaving behind an opening, uh, which opens uh, the main entrance to the life down. And he goes, Oh, okay, come in, come in, I'll, I'll give you the tour. Oh, I love a tour. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't mind the bird. And almost as soon as all of you enter the, uh, in, uh, once you are fully inside the dome, uh, it is humid. It is sweltering. It is like you're walking through a slab of molasses. Uh, it is so humid. Um, there, I, I can see there's a few of us here that like, like, Oh, okay, I'll just walk outside. I'll get the same effect. You'd be correct. 
Um, and that is the environment of which uh, in which you were greeted. Uh, but at which point he goes, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I have terrible, uh, terrible of me not to introduce myself. And he holds out his, his you know, crooked hand. You can call me Carlisle Krugen. Car, car, Carlisle? They call me Carlisle, that's right. Never more. All yeah, right. They, they, never more to you, little friend. Oh, they, you must love it in here. Don't get many birds. Oh, he's, he's a hoot. Oh, <sighs> oh. So, uh, you are... I think I reach out, shake his hand, and say, My name is Ivy. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Your garden is very beautiful. You should be very proud. Oh, I I, I, I do my best, but most of it kind of just takes care of itself. I can't... Oh, I can't take too much credit, but I appreciate the, 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 the kind of words. Uh, well, come on, uh, the, the, the allegiance told me of uh, a set word of your arrival. Uh, well, uh, why don't you all come along? I'll give you the tour, and well, uh, if you have any questions as we go, I'd be, uh, I, I'd do my best to help. I'll flip around. Flap. Flap around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He just likes he likes to get a good a good view. Why is it so gosh darn sticky in here? Well, uh, you see water evaporates and then we trap that water so it doesn't go outside of here. We like to keep the water in the desert because well, it's a desert. Oh yeah, no, no, definitely like like having water here. I had a wonderfully nice hot shower this morning, and um, I'm assuming if it wasn't for this place, I wouldn't uh, that 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 wouldn't have been a, a more thing. than likely. Uh, this uh, this oasis here does serve as the primary source of fresh water in Ankarel. Excuse me. Uh, it, 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 the the, uh, the the muscle control fades from you when you're older. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. No. It's that's 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 fine. That's that's fine. Listen, we're supposed to find um a hidden entrance uh here so uh i think i think it's best that we start uh poking around so where are the nethers in this area well uh, if my understanding is correct uh, uh, you see there's no actual source of water uh, uh that should be feeding this oasis uh, however uh, all of our fresh water does come from the, the sunken city of Kale Moreau. So it stands to reason, uh, at least by uh, their logic and what they explained to me, that if we are getting fresh water here, then there must be some connection to the sunken city. Sunken meaning underwater. That's typically or what sunken means, yes. Okay. Or not, maybe not water, but maybe sand, as we are, as he said, in a desert. Well, if if anything happens to be underwater, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm not a fish. Uh, I can't really. I I can swim, pretty okay, but uh, I I can't breathe it. And I don't like water. I will land behind the garden gnome. Unwild shape. Ah! Behind the garden gnome. He has a heart attack and dies right there. Uh, he, he rolled an eighteen on his perception. He knows. Okay. Oh hey, we got a we got a a, a raid hey, from Bam Lee. Hey, hey, right. Bam, hey. Bam Lee, Bam. Some DJ going on. 
Hey, guys, hope you had yourselves a good stream. We're here playing uh, uh, some D&D. &D. We're playing Call of the Netherdeep this evening, where the uh, uh, the party has just found themselves in the Life Dome uh, to find the entrance, potentially, to a hidden, sunken, mm -hmm. underground city. And hey, us, uh, also, also, uh, we do things a little differently here, and I have a friend that's that's willing to explain all that very, very briefly, if you'd bear with me. Thank you. Now pay attention, because this is how it works. If you'd like to add some loops to this roller coaster ride of a show, you're going to need fake chips. Now, these magical loyalty points can be earned just by watching, following, hosting, subscribing, or just engaging with us in the chat. With your fate chips, you can use your powers as an architect. All it takes is a quick redeem command in the chat. You choose the item or action and the player you want to mess with, and we'll take it from there. So let's go. Hey. All right, and thank you, Felix, for uh, for helping explain to everybody how to earn and use those points. Uh, so we go back to inside the uh, the, 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 the 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 life dome, where uh, Aldane has just unwound shape behind uh, uh, behind uh, Carlisle and shocking him. Ah, ah. Somebody say something about being a fish. I can be a fish, or a snake, or a bird. Or bear. I like being a bear. Uh, or a shark. I could be well, a shark. I, you could or a also, trout. You could, uh, well, if any of you have anything uh, bearing the Macaruidium, you could just hang on to it while you swim. Bearing the mark of Macaruidium? Is that that poison stuff that poisons people? Yeah, it's I, that stuff that, that, that got us sick. Well, I would hope you don't make direct skin contact. Uh, what is this? Your your first day in Ankarel? Hey, well, you know what? You, you, you know, it, your city is the one that has this like epidemic, and there's no posted literature. I don't see anybody five feet away from anybody. Where are the masks, man? Come on. I uh, did. You, uh, well, I would expect anyone near to our city to. Open up to at least page three of the welcome packets. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure I did. Yeah, page three. That's something about uh, uh, places to gamble. At least that's what I saw. That's what I read. Yeah. Um, uh, and as you uh, pl you know, pull out your your city guides, sure enough, where you thought had you had at least kind of gleaned over all the important parts, uh, there lies a chapter that you didn't know existed before uh, that said uh, Ruid, uh, that uh, the chapter being titled Ruidium and You. Hmm. Oh, well, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're well past that now. Uh, now so we're old we hands at it. Hold on to a Ruidium thing with gloves. We can breathe underwater. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's one of its numerous capabilities, yes. Again, I suggest reading page three on forward. Hey, Artemis, you still got that sword? Wait, who has the sword? The, uh, I, 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 I don't think sword. Artemis ever took it. I think you still got it. No, oh. I, I have it. I'm just flat out lying. <laughs> oh, I love it. But that sword was hidden. And I say, thieves in the night. Right. Um, I'm going to need that back now. I'm going to go look at plants. You guys talk about water. And let's go uh, look at bushes, look at flowers. Well, we're gonna we're gonna need we're gonna need some stuff to be able to breathe underwater if you guys want us to go traipsing around some under some underwater city. Do we still have one of those amulets that give underwater breathing? I you tell me. I don't have your damn inventory. I've given Boltar all of my amulets. I think. Or actually, I think I still have one. I have. I have a I in my inventory. I have a medal of the wetlands. I have a razorback. You have a medal of the wetlands, uh, which... It just means that I can traverse difficult terrain. 
and it doesn't cost extra movement. Right. Yeah, that's not going to do it. I do have um, four vials of blood, though. I'm ready to summon a demon. I'm going to look at him and go, uh, is there anything a demon could help with with this? Do you, do you think a demon could breathe underwater? No. I don't think they breathe. Oh, well, I mean, that 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 would solve the problem, right? Uh, he, uh, at this point, Carlisle is just kind of per, uh, looking at you all, perplexed uh, as you strategize. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at Carlisle and go. You know, it's customary for workplaces to give out proper safety equipment. I mean, you don't like you, you don't expect us to just you know, willingly put ourselves in danger like that. I, I mean, you, you guys I should have. I don't expect you to do anything. I was asked to let you in, and I have done so. Everything afterwards is all up to you. So where do we go? Do we just go swimming? I can go swimming. I'll take a look, scout on ahead. If we still had that sword, somebody could go with me. If only. <laughs> I'm going to go, you know what? Screw it. I'm going. If I have to hold my breath, I'm going to have to hold my breath. Come on. Come on, fish. Let's go. <laughs> we have a water, if we have an empty water station, we can make it turn it into a makeshift uh, oxygen holder. But... Oh. I saw it on Hercules, so I mean, or Hercules is the enough. Um, so if my understanding is correct, Boltar and Aldane go whoosh. Is it like a slide? Wee. Mm -mm. So it takes you the better part of, you know, kind of swimming straight downwards. Um, it takes you about a full, full two, three minutes. Um, which, especially for you, Boltar, is ex especially taxing. Um, can uh, I can I can I roll to see how well I do? Because I would like the 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 I would like the opportunity to 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 swim well. I was gonna wait until you got to the bottom, but sure. Um, uh, go ahead and roll me a con save. That's actually better for me. Um. Um. I roll no no I shouldn't waste a poor ten on this right I just no. swim like crap I swim I swim like crap um so as as you were just trying to push your way to the bottom uh you exert yourself so heavily that you feel you start go <laughs> and you feel the the immediate need to return to the surface. <sighs> Uh, okay, let's try that again. Aldane, on the other hand, you make it uh, to to the uh, the floor of the oasis. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. I could do that because I have a whopping plus two. Whoa, one d twenty plus two. Ooh, but I do have an advantage uh, from last session. This seems like a good idea. Good time for an advantage. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh. Oh yeah, I went from a five to a nat twenty. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. a good use of that advantage. Um. So Thank once you, you are at the uh, the bottom of the way uh, the oasis, uh, you find that there is uh, a rather thick layer of sediment uh, that that makes up the bottom. Um. But as you are searching for any potential entrance or uh, what would otherwise be an exit. Uh, you find that the sediment remains undisturbed uh, and nothing that would suggest a passage to the lower caverns. I start disturbing it. And just kind of just muddy up the view in front of you. No effect. Uh, I'll keep swimming around. Have I caught? Have I have I caught back up yet? Um, 
Get one more con save. See if uh, you can make it uh, to the bottom. Fifteen. So with that, you finally catch up to, to Al Dane where you see him uh, trying, uh, you know, just kind of just roughing up the uh, the lake bed um, and just kicking up dirt. Um, I see him doing that. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh, so he's not he's not having a good a good luck finding anything. Can I use detect magic? Um, and since I'm underwater and can't breathe, I'm going to cast it with a spell slot, so I don't have to sit there for ten minutes. Okay. Um, I want to just see if I can see anything magical that might be, uh, some sort of secret. Um, as, as you cast uh, Detect Magic, you see, uh, you look over and you see a little bit of radiant energy emanating off of, the, of Aldane, uh, which confirms that the uh, the spell is working. Uh, but as you refocus uh, your sight to the floor bed, or, or the, the lake floor, uh, you can see nothing grabbing your attention. I guess I'll surface and say there is definitively nothing down there. And Boltar, do you follow suit? Um, man, um, let me just give a quick uh investigate. Can I? Can I just give a quick? Absolutely. Uh, Hold on a second. Now here's here's what I'm gonna do because I know a 22 is not good enough to see anything if there is anything there. Nat 20. Um, it was a nat 20. Um, yeah, but still, a nat 20 isn't an automatic success for a skill check. Um, right, but it's a succeed as as good as you possibly could. No, because a 20. If 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 the DC is 25 and he rolls okay. a 22, regardless. Um. Right. Al Dane succeeded as best as he uh, as he possibly could. Okay, so then I'll just wait, go wait, I'll, nudge nudge. I'll just go straight back up. Hey, hey, I just I want to be thorough. I want to be thorough. I got you. Well, there's nothing down there. Which, for for the record, the DC for for that check was 15, which Al Dane certainly overcame himself. Alrighty. So I guess we'll just keep looking around elsewhere. And uh, with that. Um, you know, as you guys were underwater checking, uh, 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 Carlisle has been walking around uh, with uh, Artemis as uh, she's been taking more of the tour. Uh, and he's been giving her information uh, about the, uh, the Life Dome, uh, letting her know, you know, all the different details. Uh, it, it, our suspicion is uh, the water originates from the flooded caverns below Ankaral. Uh, these caverns were, were are, are also well Kale Morai was located. I suppose that's why they think uh, there's a hidden passageway here. Um, I focus, I focus in just a little bit by saying, is that a? And I start naming off a few uh, flower, like rare, like popular flowers. Type or plant types, uh, hoping to at least show him that I'm interested in what he has to say and try and say on his good side. Like, sense. oh, is that a split leaf philodendron? Oh my! Yeah, in a sense, maybe oh, he that's... could help us with a water breathing potion. Or... Indeed, and uh, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, uh pure meta he doesn't have any to give you um doesn't hurt to ask um oh uh, uh, like i said before uh, i appreciate the kind words but most everything in here functions automatically uh you know as a, as the chief super uh, chief supervisor i can override some of the controls and adjust the water level but beyond that uh well, I am but uh, a tourist most days. <laughs> a, a very wise uh, tourist. You know this place so well. And um, with uh, you know this place so well, you hear 
And uh, five seconds later, another poosh, as uh, both Aldane and Boltar surface. Uh, Do not go down there. Woo Man. Finally, they both have a bath. Finally. I come back up with fresh seaweed on me instead of leaves. Real. That that was a waste. There's nothing magical or any that, that that I saw at least. It would take a lot more time to really pour over every nook and cranny down there. Well, uh, you, you welcome back any old time you want. Uh, I'm sorry. What else you're... is here? Are there any other rooms? Yeah, yeah. Can we look around like the above water parts of this place? Well, yeah, it's all just, uh, you know, a bit of an arboretum, if anything. Uh, you know, just a, you know, a nice little place for you to go chill. It's open to the public. So, um, he's like, yes, 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 please. If you'd like to take a look around, uh, 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 the life dome is uh, available to you. Um, is there any, like, uh, like restricted areas? Open to the public. Right, exactly. The whole, the whole thing is wide open. No, like, employee areas, no place where you store things, a he basement. Is, he is the only person in there. So there's no, like, sub-level or anything? Hmm. Well, I guess, I guess I'm going to start just wandering around and, and pouring over every, like, corner that I can. And as, uh, as since you, you kind of wander off, he goes, oh, wait, uh, let me tell you about the split leaf philodendron. You see, it's an interesting plant. And then begins to go on a 10 minute diatribe uh, uh, of why the split leaf philodendron is such an interesting and amazing plant. I of would, which I am listening intently. I would like to cast, um, let me make sure. Well, I, I would like I would like to cast press the digitation and soil his pants and 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 go oh oh my oh my oh my sir uh, it seems that you may have had some sort of unfortunate ac accident uh, it's fine you go take care of that I'm good to, oh. I can I can find my way around thank you thank oh, you oh, good. Oh, no. and he, he, he drops the staff. And goes running off. And uh, I want to grab that staff. Sure. Wait, sure. Wait, 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 first. Was he wearing gloves? He was not. Okay, I just want to grab the staff. I just want to look at it. I want to look at it. I want to look you at have it. A you have a court staff, and since uh, you're still under the effect of detect magic, you do see a small, uh, you know, a, a small amount of arcane energy radiating from it. Oh, interesting. Cool. I wonder what that does. A cast identify. Um, and so with identify, you spend uh, it. Well, identify takes. A few minutes. Nope, I'm guy will use the spell slot. So you immediately are able to identify it uh, as it, it's uh, once you figure out the function of it. Uh, I don't have a name for it, unfortunately. Uh, but you go, oh, okay, and kind of just tap it to the ground, and you see the hexagonal uh, 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 tiles of the uh, the life dome above you. Just start to you know the, the shiver and quit uh, yeah. as you see a few of them begin to darken out. Uh, you tap it again and they let all the light back in. Uh, you kind of tilt it to another direction and whip it towards them, and you see them go uh, a bit frosted and uh, uh, translucent as opposed to its typical transparent. So it controls the light. All right, go. This is. And Kinda again, cool. You begin. You kind of roll it to the side and begin to, you know, uh, roll it from uh, from uh, as if it were uh, given top spin, and you see the water level of the lake begin to rise, uh, and then you reverse the motion and see the lake begin to lower. Oh, what if we? Imme I, I, you don't even finish it. I immediately make the water go down, all the way. So, 
Roll me a perception check if you'd be so kind. Sure. Aldane. Oh, Aldane. Oh, me. Okay. Uh, I could do that. Or uh, uh, both Aldane and uh, uh, Boltar. Eight. Uh, oh, God. Only a 13 because I rolled a five. Eight, but you know what? I'm going to use my daily inspiration. Give it to me. Oh, your inspiration. We're going to head it. You have one too. <laughs> Ten. Uh, as you are playing around with it, uh, at some point, you kind of you know, just kind of stand proudly uh, as, as you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, are figuring everything out. Um, and turn your head, but for, for you know, kind of plant it in the ground, uh, and go to kind of observe your work. And it's not even a second before you go to reach back for it, and the staff is gone. Huh? My land, a fairy fire is up. Which, which, which is uh, uh, actually a little, a little uh, fortuitous as. <clears throat> You know, you had rolled, and I should probably go roll back a little bit and uh, pay off what you did earlier. You did lower the lake bed down and found, uh, you know, continued to search about it and found no entrance or nothing that indicated uh, that there was anything leading uh, to the city of Kale Moreau uh, and had restored the, the lake to its previous level. And as you were continuing to play with it, uh, figure out all its functionality and whatnot, and kind of just uh, you know having a good old time with uh, with Aldane and Goliath, because they're like, oh well, well, what if we try this? Um, you hear behind you uh, the lake begin to uh, uh, burble and roil as oh. bubbles begin to raise to the surface. And eventually more bubbles and more bubbles. And eventually the water begins to turn white from from all the, the, the roiling that begins to take place. As a whoosh, it be, uh, the, the lake begins to geyser and the, 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 uh, the ensuing wave just washes all of you. Um, let's see. And I, there is a... No, uh, and uh, there is so much water that it actually manages to carry all of you outside of or, or to the edges of the inside part of the the life dome. Why? That was fun. Artists, Let's do that again. This includes you. Everyone inside uh, the life dome is is washed to the uh, to, to the outer edges. I'll swim to the geyser. And as you do, uh, the, the the water level begins to lower uh, and, and re uh, as the water is receding back into uh, the lake, you find yourself that uh, you find it's not quite necessary to swim. Uh, for quite uh, that long uh, as you're able to stand up onto your feet fairly certain or fairly shortly. Um, and let's see, let's go ahead and put you guys inside the life dome. Just let me know if y'all are able to see Is that. that a thumbnail image? What? You just gotta, you just gotta zoom oh, in. Oh, there it goes. It just took a while for it to clear up for me. It was in thumbnail mode. It, do, it does that from the, the, from time to time. Okay, where, where okay. Is, is up here where we are? Um, tell you what, uh, because of the, uh, that's actually just where I had kind of uh, set y'all. Uh, okay. Artemis is probably going to be on the outside. Goliath came back, and you guys were, uh, you know, toying around with the, um... or actually, no, I'm an idiot. All of you got washed out. Uh, except I swam to the geyser. So, sure enough. All right. Um, 
so as you are back uh, in the uh, the cent- center of the lake, you see uh, a wave of water begin to encircle you. Neat. I swim and, straight into and, the middle. And it begin uh, as you uh, s- s- uh, go into the center. Uh, that that swirl begins to get tighter and tighter and tighter until eventually um let's see that would be uh <laughs> i'm gonna be a dick and ask anyway uh does a 21 hit aldane yes it does all right uh and you are going to get uh, you are picked up and just clean out of the water uh, the rest of you looking on uh, from the outskirts, look as you see Aldane just almost sourceless, uh, sourcelessly lifted above the uh, the oasis water and just uh, unceremoniously tossed down and slammed into the ground. Uh, as Aldane, you take... Uh, that's going to be 8 plus 2. So that's going to be 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. Banditos, I need you all to roll initiative. So that's going to be... Fifteen. And all right, hold on. Yeah, give me a second. Get, uh, give me a second before you... Uh, hold on. So that Aldane is a fifteen. Let me get that. Um, and the... So the first one was, and the second one, okay. All right, 25 to 20, and we'll roll for Goliath. Artemis rolled a 12. All right, so 25 to 20, nobody. 20 to 15, we got Aldane. Boltar. Uh, Boltar, what'd you get? 19. Boltar got a 19. Hey, Divination Wizard going higher up in the uh, initiative order. This is a new world. I love it. And Artemis got a 12. So we got... Voltorb. Okay, and with that, um, Baltar, uh, we start the initiative order with you, uh, where uh, you just saw um, uh, you just saw Aldane just get lifted up into the air and just slam down into uh, the uh, the. The ground uh, just outside. So, Aldane, if it's okay, I'm going to move you. Uh, just outside uh, the uh, the drop off to the oasis. As it stands right uh, right this second, you do not see what caused it. All right. So I'm literally just like, uh, what the hell? Um, I guess I'm going to try to get over there so I can see what the hell is going on. Um, uh, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, can I move right here and get a better vantage point of what the hell is going on? Um, you do. Uh, and you attempt to uh, you know, take a look, uh, but go ahead and uh, roll a perception check. This has been going so well for me. Huh, six. 
Um, and you, uh, so with that, you notice nothing at all. I'm gonna go. What should I? Should I? Should, should I just burn it? I don't. I, I don't know what it is. Um. Let's see if there's anything useful I can do at all. I mean, I guess I could summon a demon, but I don't know. This isn't demon worthy yet. Let's I wait have, until we know what we're. I up have against. no idea what it is. This is this isn't demon worthy. Uh, can I um can I prepare an action? Yes, you can. I would like to prepare a fireball for the first thing that I see that comes out of that. Uh, actually, no, mind spike. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a mind spike. Okay. And what's the trigger for the mind spike? Just seeing something out of the ordinary. I see something that looks like it could have been the thing that caused uh, uh, Aldane flying out of the air, or all of this mayhem and extra water. Okay. Uh, so with Aldane lying on the ground, and you kind of just uh, just holding his spell to your side, <clears throat> we move forward uh, in the order as whoosh, another burst of water uh, emerges from the lake. Uh, let's see, that's going to be uh, another perception check from Aldane, or uh, sorry, not Aldane, Voltar, 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 sorry. From uh, me? Yep. Uh, what kind of save? Sorry, I uh, I just saw my thing wasn't. Um, uh, and fine. No save. Perception. Perception. Got it. Hey, twenty one. Uh, with that, as uh, the, whatever this is emerges out of the water, you see uh, uh the uh you know uh, the water that is dripping off it, and you were able to make out a bit of a human uh, humanoid form. Uh, being, uh, you know, uh, wrapped in that that watery mist as it's bursting out. Unleash the mind spike. Go ahead, roll the hit. Uh, this is a um a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save. So let's see. Wisdom is plus two for this thing. Uh, that's going to be a nine. So it fails. It fails. Uh, I'm casting this at a second level, so I can gain back a first level spell slot. Uh, that's going to be eight points of uh, psychic damage. So that'll mark it down to that. And um, yes, that will be all for that one. Um, I'll get, get so, one of those back. So you unleash its spell and you see, uh, uh, you know, uh, th that, that, you know, formless wa uh, water that it's, uh, that it's attaching to whatever this is. Uh, begin to you know kind of curl in and retch before uh, the humanoid humanoid form shakes its head uh, and just darts towards Aldane, uh, leaving whatever water was attached to it behind, uh, and just charges uh, charging it into Aldane. Let's see, that is going to be two attacks on Aldane. That's going to be a 9 to hit. Nope. And a 13 to hit. Nope. Both miss. Uh, so you kind of, so Aldane, as you see this, this mist of water just kind of charge towards you, uh, you have the wherewithal and, and uh, the wisdom to kind of just, uh, you know, step off to the side as you hear a, uh, you know, a large thud hit the ground next to you. So is this person thing solid? Suppose we'll find out as the uh, as almost exactly the same as uh, its compatriot. Another geyser of water uh, bursts from the uh, 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 burst from the water, uh, and once again, let's see, let's see, it has a movement speed of what? A fly speed of Oh, that's enough, all right. Nineteen and seventeen. Boltar. A nineteen and a seventeen in that order. 
19 and a 17 in that order. Uh, let's see, five. Uh, but, uh, so here's what we're going to do. The first one's going to hit. Um, the second one, I cast shield. All right. You, you, so as you were, uh, you, you see this mist of water and eventually, uh, you know, the, uh, the water kind of just, uh, you know, atomizes and fades away before you, uh, you feel the <sighs> land in front of you. And you feel yourself get lifted up and then boom, oh. slammed into the ground as you are hit for uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage on the first one. Uh, however, you feel something reach for you, but you bring up your arcane shield in front of you and just hear her, you know, kind of just screech off it. You better not leave any marks on that. It's terrible to, to buff it out because it's ethereal and, and whatnot. It, it's it's just hard. <laughs> With that, Aldane. Uh, Barkskin. This creature cannot have less than a 16 armor class on myself as my regular action and for my bonus action, Wild Shape Giant Constrictor Snake. Okay. And will that end your turn? That's pretty much all I can do. I'm assuming the thing is right beside me. If it's not beside me, I'm moving towards it. 8, 12, plus 8. All right. So if that is going to end your turn, Artemis, uh, you have now seen two, uh, two of your colleagues get yanked off the ground and just body slammed into the floor. Um... As it stands right this second, you are still struggling to find a source of what is attacking your, your compatriots. Mm. Yeah. And I just love how my teammates just look before they leap or just run right smack into danger. I mean, uh, okay. okay. And okay. the tank. It is... A problem. Uh, let's see. I remember. The speed is on. The way I look at it is, uh, we're 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 gonna run into this eventually. We just we just got got there a little quicker. Speed run. Well, well, I was kind of thinking maybe we could pop back out, get a couple of uh, water breathing potions, and then come back in when we're better prepared. But since I can't do that, uh, I move up behind Boltar. Uh, Fairy Fire Lamp is still casting a 10-foot uh, radius, so anything invisible or shrouded should uh, be semi-illuminated right now. There should be an aura, something we can see. Indeed. There is, let's see, circle measure, 10-foot radius for sure. I just wanted to double-check. Uh, so as Artemis gets closer to you, Aldane, you see this, uh, let's see, let me go layer. We'll move it up to the token layer. Um, you see this, this, uh, this misty humanoid form, uh, standing and lording over top of you. Okay. Um, as a as a bit of a joke, uh, right where uh, Baltar is, you hear her voice say, "See you," and then I do a uh, double double handed uh, Eldritch blast. Go ahead and roll your attacks, Baltar. You actually feel these things go past your head. Who? That's probably gonna miss. Seven. Um. Okay. Let's ro roll your other one. Uh. Oh damn it. Oh. Perfect. Ten. As it stands right now, both miss. Um. We'll we'll make one of them a uh, fifteen plus whatever. 
All right, so 15 plus whatever hits. We'll take that. Uh, so, yeah, black-ish, bluish energy shoots out past uh, Voltar's head. Uh, giving a nice little sideburn trim if you didn't want it or didn't want it. For four points of force damage. All righty. And as it strikes, uh, you kind of notice that your uh, uh, the uh, the the eldritch energy just kind of you know makes a, a perfect hole through uh, through its ethereal form before it closes right back up. Um, uh, hopefully, as a free action, I can say the Baltar is uh, air uh, air elemental. Whatever you did to it, it hurts. Keep it up. So okay. that means that means what Aldane has must be one of those elements. What are those elements? Air, earth, fire, water, water. Heart. Heart? God damn, we both in the same fucking place. By your power, uh, I, by, I am Captain Planet. Captain. Yeah, where were you ten minutes ago? Um, yeah, so uh, bonus action. Don't call me unless you're ready for that pain. <laughs> uh, bonus. Yeah. Would I? Can I give uh, Boltar? Uh, something as a bonus action, or would that be action action? Not really. Uh, all, all you could do is hold an action for, you know, if, uh, if you want to combine things together. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but there are specific nice. abilities and feats that let you give your action to other players, as I understand. So it would be. I wanted to just. I just wanted a pocket uh, to put in his pocket two of the uh, potions we just got, or I just got, but that's fine. Ah, oh, yeah, no, that's cool. That I'm okay with it. Sure, 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 sure. Yep, that's why I want to make sure. So, uh, Baltar, you feel in your, wherever you keep a uh, pouch, you, you feel me slip uh, two glass containers into your into it. Perfect. So you get two basic, two basic healing potions. Cool beans. All right. All right. That's With it. that, we're, uh, it is, uh, it, I'm guessing that's going to end your turn. Um, and it, it's going to come up to Goliath. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm starting to get a hang of this, guys. Hey, check this out. Uh, and you see him start to bring a uh, ball of fire together before he casts it forward at the, uh, the apparition in front of you, Voltar. And... Jesus Christ, I'm pretty sure that hits. Goliath needs me to roll for him because that's going to mm -hmm. be a 22. That's going to be a 22 to hit, uh, which for Firebolt is 2d10. Jesus Christ. The, Nat says the Dutch have gone invisible. Wow. Um, and that's going to deal. 14 points of fire damage with a cantrip. That ain't two shabs. Nope. And uh, as uh, you're kind of, you know, uh, you know, staggering to pull yourself back up, Boltar, uh, you you just uh, feel the heat of uh, of a fire bolt kind of just whip right past you and make impact into into this. This apparition that is in front of you. I'm gonna go, guys, can we please? Different angle of attack! Please! Sorry, man, we gotta repel the invaders. It's because we didn't have the wall. That's how they all got in here. No, not the wall. Th this is not the time for the wall. And, and it's kind of, in, in my opinion, it's kind of like a narrow bridge, so I, I'm not really going to climb over you when, yeah, so, sorry, mm -hmm. but. All right. That's me. I think we got one more round of fighting in before we have to wrap it up, so uh, let's go ahead and get back to the top of the older order. Speed, speed uh, run. 
Altar. That's cool. I already knew what I was going to do. Um, so I'm going to set this up. Uh, I'm going to, uh, for my bonus action cast hex, uh, we're going to hex its wisdom. Okay. And then I'm going to try to hit it with a fireball. All right. Go ahead and roll your attack. Sure, I'm assuming an 11 does not hit. 11 will miss. Uh, it's a 16. 16 hits. Uh, actually, it's a it's a, a 23, but that's that's neither Still here nor there. Yeah. Um, that's 15 points of fire damage, following up with a proc of uh hex for six points of damage. Oof. So 21 total. Not too shabby at all as uh, you roll your fire uh, your firebolt through it. Uh, you see it's a you know ghostly apparition, you know, uh, again, begin the part where your firebolt had hit and begin to you know kind of uh, reconvene itself. Uh, it, and as your hex damage, uh, you know, uh, takes effect. You kind of see like the same effect as like, uh, uh, like when you had the dirty VCR where everything kind of just, you know, zzz, sideways for a little bit. That. All right, and Baltar, does that end your turn? Tony. Um. Yes, that was my bonus action. My action. Um. Rick Tony. Oh. And you said yeah? No, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm done. All right. With that, it is going to come back uh to the apparition. Um matter of fact, now that it's visible, uh actually anyone who would like to roll me an arcana check. Oh, the like will that. be the same. Fifteen. I can tell 18. you right. I can tell you right now, Goliath passed the damn track. He needs me to roll for him because that was a natural nineteen plus whatever. Okay. Fifteen, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen. So, and, and Goliath, uh, having rolled a total of twenty-four. Uh, you'll hear him. Oh, that's one of those filthy invis invisible stalkers. Make sure you keep a good eye on them, because uh, uh, if uh, you get too far away from that that lantern, you're not going to see them. Oh, I should probably mention then that um, with Mind Spike, as long as we are on the same plane of existence, uh, he can't. They cannot become hidden from me, and if an invisible gains no benefit from that condition against me. Against you. Against me. Else. So specifically, so at least specifically me. No matter where that thing goes, I can see it. Got it. That's an oddly appropriate spell to have right now. Against two invisible opponents. All right. So uh, with that. That stalker is uh, going to, well, it's right there with you, uh, Baltar. So it's just going to go ahead and take a, a couple swipes at you. Uh, the first one is going to be a 22 to hit. Second one will, uh, second attack will be a 14 to hit. Uh, we'll do the same thing we did uh, last time. We'll take one and we will shield the other. All right. So with that, uh, you are uh, you feel your feet, uh, you know, uh, lift off the ground as you are, you know, all of a sudden uh, turn uh, turn prone midair and ah. drop to the ground as you uh, as you feel the air just pushed out <laughs> your lungs. Uh, and you take, it's going to be, three, nine, uh, that's going to be 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, God. Guys, I don't like this. I don't like this. Yeah. Let's see. Guys, kill it. Kill it. Aldane. Kill it. 
Nobody hurts my friend I'll but be, me. If you would like, uh, roll me. Uh, you have an attack of opportunity at disadvantage. All right. Um, I have a bonus of. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Four and then five, six, seven. D twenty plus seven and eleven. Eleven uh, sadly misses, as you see, just um, kind of like when uh, you have uh, you know a duck or a goose just flying above the surface of the water, and you see the disturbance. You see the same thing kind of uh, circle around you, uh, and you follow the direction uh, that the water uh, disturbance uh, went, uh, and it is going in the direction of Goliath. Well, I'm going to go for the one in front of Boltar as I hiss and slither my way towards it and attack it. So, hold on. Let's see, so that will hit. That will also hit. Poor, poor Goliath. Uh, so that's going to be... Kill it! Oh, they were both before me? So, uh, so uh, Artemis, you look off to your left and see Goliath just kind of get picked up off the ground just like Boltar just had and get <clears throat> slain to the ground once, picked up one more time and, <clears throat> and a second time is <clears throat> oh, not cool, man. Um, Goliath suffers 20 points of bludgeoning damage off of that. So, with that, that is the other one's turn. Um, do, 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 do. Aldane, you're up. I hiss and Artemis, slither at the one that is in front of Boltar, performing my great singular attack. I don't know. Plus seven. It is a constriction attack. With a 19 to hit. 19 does hit. All right. Well, the damage is slash roll 2d8 plus 4. 16 points of damage. Um, and also, the target is grappled and restrained uh, with an escape DC of 16. It has a movement speed of zero attacks against it gets, gets advantage. Its attacks get disadvantage. Uh, somehow or the uh, or the other, uh, and uh, let's say I'm going to move you to be appropriate to where your character actually is, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, somehow or the other, uh, you are able to wrap yourself around this ghostly apparition that seems to have no mass uh, and kind of just restrict yourself around it and begin to uh, uh, reduce its mobility. That's Artemis, Artemis, you're up. Well... First, you don't succeed, you try, try again. Um, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Roll two attacks for me. At advantage. I have no, I have no, um, uh, portent to help this time. My First portent is hits. dry. And I did hear right, he said at advantage, so the second one will be at advantage. Got that. 14, 15, 7, and the second one's 17. Yep. So, that's... So, so that's going to be two hits. Oh, please, I'll steal. I see the six, what came before it? One. All right. So with second, I don't know why it's rolling two dice, but whatever. Uh, so a one on the first roll, a four on the second roll, so five points total of uh, force 
uh, damage. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. And it. again, you just see a pair of El Eldritch Blasts just, uh, you know, kind of open up uh, this apparition, um, uh, you know, uh, with a, a trail of vapor following behind. Uh, Artemis's Eldritch Blast before that little trail of vapor just returns itself back to the stalker and fills back in where it, it had been hit. With that, if that ends your turn, yeah, that ends my turn. With that, Goliath uh, is like, ah, 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 it's, <coughs> ah, this hurts. Ah. Oh, I don't like this, man. I don't like this one bit. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm getting pretty angry. It's, uh, I, I can't contain it anymore. And no, 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 no! Keep, 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 don't, 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 don't do that again. We can't, we can't afford the lawsuit. You gotta get mean. You gotta get angry. Hundred feet long, five feet wide. I think that would make the most sense. Uh, you see um, anyone looking over in the direction of Goliath, uh, see uh, he uh, starts to be, uh, you see little bolts of electricity begin to kind of hop across uh, the top of his head and begin to, you know, kind of uh, trickle down the rest of his body because, of course, Goliath believes in trickle down. Um, and he... he uh, he brings his uh, his hands together in this crooked motion, bring, bring, uh, turning them up where you see these bolts of electricity uh, uh, continue to spark until he casts them forward and a large 100-foot-long lightning bolt just emerges in front of him. Um, and that is going to be, let's see, b -b -b a dexterity save, dexterity 14. Unfortunately, uh, whatever creature he's aiming at does save, but it still takes damage. 8d6 of the uh, damage, to be exact. Wow. So 10, 13, 19, 24, 26. 31, 35, cut in half, so that's going to be 10. Okay. All right. So as Goliath just, uh, just lets forward this large blast of uh, uh, you know platinum white uh, electricity in front of him you see uh, the bolts of electricity begin to wrap themselves around uh, another humanoid form and for but a split second any of you looking in the direction see an exact uh, uh, the exact uh, kind of same shape and form of the uh, the stalker in front of you uh, before the electricity dissipates and the stalker is invisible once more. That will end Goliath's turn and sings as hell. I am about 10 minutes over on session time already. We'll pick up on the, the rumble at the dome next time. Um, so that being said, thank you every one of you at home uh, for coming and joining us tonight. We do so enjoy having you here with us. Um, and I'm so sorry that tonight is ending, but the good news is, is if you are looking for more fun, exciting action in the form of uh, tabletop RPGs, well, have I got some good news for you. We got more coming your way. 
uh, starting with tomorrow, which is, you know, going to prove me wrong because tomorrow there is no broadcast. Catch you later, Nathaniel. Um, uh, there is no broadcast uh, as uh, we have an off-screen session zero. So uh, keep your eyes on the Discord from the game that's going to develop out of that. However, you're not waiting around too long as Friday the 19th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have Cookie Track with the next episode having some work done. Uh, join us for a Star Trek story crafted by Rufus the Robot and Simon the Cat uh, that must contain the following classic Star Trek elements. Uh, first up, a surgically assisted disguise. Uh, someone below commander rank takes temporary command. And a current when filmed pop culture cited as an old classic. So show up. Help make up a story and start the weekend off on a high note. Uh, Sunday, we have the uh, another edition of Off the Rails with guests to be determined. Um, and to answer your question, Super Drowfly, they have not announced what type of cookie. So sorry. Um, then Monday, we have the next episode of Star Trek Beja Rising uh, with the next episode, Thoughts and Prayers. Uh, be sure to tune in for that. And then Tuesday, uh, the 23rd at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have the next episode of A Strange New Playtest, Episode 3, uh, Title in Development. And this time next week, uh... No show! <clears throat> Remember, we're, we're, we're down two players. So... Show up this time next week and stare at a blank screen. No, 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 no. We're going to do something. I'm sh we'll, we'll, we'll do something, I promise you. Um, even if it's just me talking into the void for um, for an hour and a half. I I'll, I'll be here. Well, such as it is, we may do uh, some sort of par uh, community game night. We might do off the rails. Make sure you uh, uh, pay attention to that Discord. Uh, but that is it for uh, announcements. Uh, I don't think we have a raid going. Uh, so as I did always, see Nat earlier. He might he might be throwing a raid. He might be throwing it to Nat for a raid. Is there a raid? I'll give it ten seconds. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. No. No. Okay. Just no thank raid. You. Uh, so guys, all of you out there, I don't know. Find yourself a small indie on the rails for once. Huh? He said, "He said maybe we do on the rails for once." Uh, hey, it's your channel. You do what you want. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, not too shabby. Since you're here, you want to set us up with a raid? There we yeah! go. Yeah. A tales choo -choo. comic. So, guys, when you get in there, drop all those emotes. Be fun. Be interactive. But most importantly, don't be a dick. Uh, and uh, you know, make sure they know who sent you. Uh, but until I see you guys in the fortnight, those of you at home, keep crafting your own stories, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. All right. Time to go. <laughs> yep. Bye-bye.